Welcome back. In this section, we'll explore another feature modifier, unfold children and select interpolated, enable modifier. You notice another modifier panel here. First of all, let's talk about three common parameters influence, threshold, and seat. These parameters are present in every modifier and control the overall influence strength. Let's see how they work. Influence determines the force of this modifier. A smaller value indicates a weaker influence. Threshold keeps some guides from being influenced by a modifier. A larger value means more guides not influenced. When the value reaches 1, none of the guides are influenced, which is equivalent to disabling the modifier. Changing seed brings about new shapes for guides. Please note, in the clump and length modifiers, the seed only works when the threshold is enabled. You might have noticed the X in parentheses symbol for expressions. If errors occur in the expression, you'll see a warning below. You can click on the question mark on the right side to show the usage. OK, let's go through a few variables. Underscore clamp underscore length changes with the length of guys. For example, if we apply this variable to influence, the value of influence will change according to the guide's length. Please note that this variable only works in the current modifier. Next, we add a noise modifier. Underscore path underscore length retrieves the length of each individual hair. As you can see, the influence on individual hairs depends on their respective lengths. To demonstrate how underscore PSET works, I create two new modifiers. OK, it retrieves the particle settings. Copy influence in clump and jump to influence in noise. Type underscore PSET and paste. It's easy peasy but quite handy. Underscore mods is a list of all modifiers used to access attributes in another modifier. For example, to access the value of scale in the length modifier, you can type underscore mods 0 dot scale. You can also directly access the name of the modifier. This way, the expression is not influenced even if you adjust the order of modifiers. The second button provides influence range control using vertex groups. After clicking it, you will find all the vertex groups. Select one as needed and make changes. The double-headed arrow reverses the vertex group, and the cross removes it. Under the vertex groups panel, there are two new buttons, rename vertex group and remove vertex group. You might wonder why we added this when similar features already exist. Actually, if you directly modify the name, the newly modified name cannot be updated automatically. However, using rename vertex group to modify the name works without issues. Similarly, if we don't use this feature to remove a vertex group, errors can occur.
Moving on to the third button, it allows us to reuse textures, which work the same way as the built-in feature in Blender. Click the plus button to create a new texture. Set color, texture size, etc. We can paint it randomly just to see how it operates. Back to object mode, you see the texture is working. There's also a double headed arrow that reverses the texture in use. The next button allows you to edit some options of the texture. And the third button leads you to painting mode. On the far right, the button lets you add weight layers. There are two modes available, point and path. Name the new layer, and we'll start with point mode. Create one more weight layer and select Path mode as needed. There is an option, Apply Current Weight. When this is checked, the current weight will be transferred to this weight layer. Default weight sets the default value for this weight layer. The two arrows are used to adjust the order, and minus is to remove layers. The render button determines which weight layer will be used in dynamic simulation. By the way, we provide a new feature called Remove Weight Layer. And if you transfer weight from A to B, you can keep the weight layers of B while removing the weight of A 